Hi, welcome back everybody. Welcome to the channel. It's Mike Newton in the back garden and we're going to be a bit of driver testing today. And we're going to maybe have a little look and some comparisons between changing loft or changing movable weight in the head and which has the biggest influence of changing your launch angle. Is it loft or is it movable weight? We know movable weight can change spin and we also know obviously loft can also change spin as well. So we're going to look at those parameters and see which is more influential of changing your launch, is it through loft or movable weight? Okay, so to do this test, I've got the Callaway Maverick and it's a sub zero. So we've got the heavyweight and the lightweight, which can movable from front to back, which is obviously what we're going to change around a little bit. I've got a 9 degree head and also a 10.5 degree head. I'm going to use the same shaft in both of these heads. So we're going to start off with the 9 degree, a bit more into my sort of spec, 9 degree with a heavy weight in the front section, hit a batch of shots, get some numbers on GC quad. Then we're going to flip the heavy weight into the back section, keep it at the 9 degree, see what changes. Does that launch change with the heavy weight in the back section? Does the spin increase, etc.? Get some numbers from that, and then we're going to flip into the 10.5 degree head with the weight forward and see if that extra bit of um, loft makes a bigger influence of that launch and spin than it does actually of the movable weights. Okay, let's get this first one underway. As I say, batch of shots got 9 degree head. This is set at 9 degree, heavy weight in the front section. Decent solid strike on that particular one. Just fractured the left side, better strike than that first one. That's a good distance there, 318. Probably going to come out quite low spin, yeah, 1800 on that spin, 164 on that ball speed. So we do know that um, obviously where we hit it on the club face will obviously influence that, that launch angle. You know, low in the face strikes tend to come out a little bit lower, high in the face strikes do come out a little bit higher. That's where we're really going to do it over sort of multiple shots in a sort of test, really. Going for a little bit of that left hand side, that was a bit of a toe strike. Yeah, good solid hit there. Get into that 290 area, carry 312 total. Okay, and that's not a bad hit either, getting out to that three sort of 10 mark. Okay, so those batch of shots hit with the nine degree with that heavy weight in that front section. Let's flip that heavy weight in the back section, keep it nine degree, another batch of shots. Okay, so that heavy weight in that back section now. So we know the weights going from that front to the back can help to influence launch angle as well as sort of spin. And there's obviously a lot of talk around these sort of movable weights from the marketing side of things, a lot of these brands. Um, so I say, kept it at 90 degree, but now that heavy weight in that back section. So possibly should expect to see a little bit more spin, for sure. And hopefully a little bit more of that launch. Good solid first hit, a little bit leaky out to the right, a bit similar to that first one I hit to be honest with the uh, with that heavy weight in that first, first forward section. We'll probably just see those ones that have gone a little bit out to the right tend to launch a little bit higher. Okay, that's a nice solid hit on that one, probably the best strike so far. That's getting a really good distance there, 3 390. So similar to that first one, to be honest. Be interested to see what that launch and spin is doing. Get another good solid strike. Probably the straightest of the lot there. 318 again. on that okay so there's a batch of shots with that heavy weight in that back section at that nine degrees we'll take a look at those numbers and compare just, just the shifting of the weight with the same loft before we jump into that 10.5 head 
Okay, so just looking at those uh, couple of numbers there to start with first, we've got the 9 degree with the weight forward, then in the blue is the 9 degree with the weight in the back section. So we can see we've got a launch angle 11.7 with the weight in the furthest forward section, giving us a spin of 1972 on average. 287 carry, 313 total. Moving that weight in that back section, we can see the launch on average has just popped up to 12.6. So slight increase of launch there by just under one degree on an average there. So slight little change of launch, but it has changed the spin as we probably expect it to do up to 2.4 against that 1900. You can see there the peak at 38 yards, so seven yards higher in its peak of its flight, getting out to 2.88, 3.10 total. Okay, so now I've got the 10.5 head and the heavy weight in the bottom in the furthest forward section. So we're gonna maybe see how possibly the 10.5 degree head will possibly influence this launch angle as we've just sort of discussed. I think from many golfers, I think a lot of golfers are reluctant to go into a higher loss. So some people think a 10.5 is more for a maybe a higher handicapper. A better player would tend to go in a sort of nine degree, eight degree head. So there's always that little bit of that sort of gray area there. I think where a lot of golfers are reluctant to go into more loft when actually this, this probably should be going into more loft. Um, obviously things that dictate up the sort of loft is really your dynamic loft that you present at impact, which is obviously going to be very different to your static loft, which is printed on the actual head. So if you hit a little bit more down on the golf ball, generally you would need a little bit more loft to try and get that ball to sort of launch and get through those optimum windows to maximise your sort of distance. Let's give this 10.5 head a hit. Instantly seeing that little bit of a higher flight just where it hits the net a little bit higher than that previous batch of shots so that got out to 3 307. Definitely just see that ball just hit that slightly higher up in the in the net there, nice and neutral. Okay, so there's a batch of shots hit with that 10.5 head with that weight in that furthest forward section. So let's compare the numbers against the nine degree. Okay, so just to sort of familiarize ourselves here, we've got the 8.7, sorry, 11.7 degree um, launch angle with a nine degree with a weight forward. We then got that up to 12.6 with the weight back as you can see at that point there and then in the last batch of numbers in the yellow with a 10 and a half weight forward you can see it's just increased again 13.7 on that launch you'll just see some of there where I caught them a little bit higher in, the, in that toe section so 16 and 15 one where I caught a little bit lower in the club face sort of level themselves out a little bit so looking at it as an average uh, 13.7 degrees spin at that 2000 mark so quite a low spin there would expect more but again you see that toe strike really pulls my spin off and also we know with that weight a little bit in that further forward section helps to sort of do that when you miss those those center sort of strikes it does pull a bit of spin so you see a real low on 1600 and mega low on that 1200 clearly a little bit of those uh, slight miss strikes there so carrying out 280 run out at 299 Okay guys, there we go. So there's an interesting little video there just seeing how movable weight can influence launch as well as loft and which maybe has the bigger effect there. Probably from that particular test there. Okay, I didn't strike the 10.5 probably as good as I did with a nine degree there. But then again, it's human testing, isn't it? We're not always gonna hit that same position in the club face over over 10. You could go deep and hit obviously more multiple shots. Um, but this video just gone for on forever and ever so um look at that obviously movable weight in the nine degree from moving it from the front to the back that heavy weight did change the launch did change the spin as we sort of expect it to sort of do then as you change into loft weight going back into that first forward position you can see again that did actually pop the launch up more than when the weight was in the back in the nine degree 
obviously we could go a step further and put the weight in the back in the 10 and a half and probably see that launch go up a little bit more then into that sort of 14 sort of area so it's getting the combination for you guys again there's an important message here so you go and get fit um, is to get obviously that right dynamic loft that you're presenting then maybe dial it in a little bit with the weights um, and then also that in itself will help with a little bit of spin so some scenarios you could go into more loft than possibly what you think put the heavy weight in that forward section so you get more of a higher launch lower spin and we know that is creating a little bit more distance of so the guys who need some distance that could be a good option for you but again it's all down to your club delivery so it's very much important for you to go and get fitted on a launch monitor test them compare them obviously different shafts as well will help um, to get that perfect sort of fit for your particular swing Push comments down below, let me know your thoughts as always. If you haven't subscribed, hope you enjoyed the video. Do hit that subscribe button, share the video around, hit the thumbs up, and hopefully we'll catch up with you all very soon.